5. Arguably the most controversial map in Call of Duty Zombies. Despite having a short history of records compared to other maps, it's had one of the richest histories, full of controversies such as cheated records and hidden gameplay. So what makes this map so unique? Why is there such a rich history? And how have players pushed the map to its limits? On November 9th, 2010, Call of Duty Black Ops 1 was released, bringing back a more modern version of zombies from its very successful predecessor, World at War. However, unlike its predecessor, Black Ops 1 would launch with two zombie maps, Keynote de Toten and 5. While both received criticism from the community, Kino was favored much more due to it being more casual friendly and overall more enjoyable. Although, the same could not be said for 5. Despite adding new features to the game such as buildable electro traps, bonfire sails, and a new boss round, it was widely accepted as a bad map because it was too difficult. The reason for this was due to the fact no infinite damaging wonder weapons existed, and the map being extremely small, allowing players to easily get trapped in a horde of zombies. Because of these two factors, many casual players and high rounders would leave this map in the dust, besides a select few. However, it would only take one day after the game's release, the first known record was achieved. On November 10th, 2010, Excalizor would achieve round 33 running the Pentagon Room strategy. This strategy cut the two door barriers in the Pentagon Room open, which allowed the player to go in a loop around the entire room and get a horde of zombies. Despite a few inconsistencies with the strategy, it was pretty consistent for its time. Furthermore, to stay alive longer, Excalizor would buy Juggernaug, allowing him to survive up to 4 hits instead of 2, and Speed Cola to reload his weapons faster. Also, there is one more perk he bought, but did not show up in the gameplay. That perk was Quick Revive. Because Excalizor was playing solo, buying Quick Revive allowed a player to get 3 more lives before the game over on their 4th. Due to this, Excalizor would achieve round 33, making this the first, and surprisingly, one of the longest held records on 5. Unfortunately, it would lead to one of the most shocking games ever played. In fall of 2011, a very popular Zombies YouTuber named Mr. Dalek JD would achieve round 74, beating Excalizor's previous record by 41 rounds. Furthermore, Dalek would achieve 8 million points, making this one of the highest amount of points achieved in the Zombies game. At least, that's what everyone thought. It wasn't until 6 years later, an unknown but very knowledgeable player, Karandal, would make a video explaining how Dalek's game was cheated. However, before I explain why this game is cheated, I'll need to explain the basics of the map first so you can get a better understanding. First, let me explain the Electro Traps on 5. The Electro Traps are traps which will shock the zombies and kill them instantly when they run through it, no matter how high of a round you are on. In total, there are two Electro Traps on the map which are located near the first room, one near the Quick Revive machine and the other near the MPL wall by. Speaking of wall buys, let's talk about why they're important. If you remember at the start of the video, you might have seen a player or two holding the MPL on round 100 or even 200 plus. While it might seem odd to carry a weapon that deals almost zero damage on such a high round, it's a key part to running high round strategies. The reason for this is because while the points deal almost zero damage, they'll provide points to a player. To be exact, 10 points per bullet. This is extremely important as Electro Traps cost 1000 points to activate it, so earning points is a must. Lastly, if you remember, I was talking about a new boss round being added to 5. This boss round introduced a new NPC called the Pentagon Thief. This boss chases you around the Pentagon until he takes one of your weapons. However, you can kill the Pentagon Thief before he takes one of your weapons. If you do kill him before one of your weapons are stolen, you will get a max ammo which refills all ammo in your weapons and a bonfire sale which allows players to upgrade their weapons via the Pack-a-Punch for 1000 points 
instead of 5,000 points per weapon. Obviously, this is really useful if a player wants to speedrun the map as they only need to spend 3,000 points instead of 15,000 to pack a punch their three weapons. Despite this, if a player does get one of their weapons taken away, they can still kill the Pentagon Thief. If they do, they won't get a bonfire sale. Instead, they'll still get a max ammo, but will also get a fire sale, which allows a player to hit the mystery box for only 10 points instead of 950. Because the game allows a player to get either a bonfire sale or a fire sale from the Pentagon Thief, a player can decide which is better to get depending on the situation they are in. Okay, now that you understand the basics of 5, let me explain how Dalek's round 74 game was cheated. First, let's take a look at his points. Right before Dalek died, he had 8,255,560 points. However, when he died and the game brought him to the game over screen, you can see how many overall points he earned in this game, which was 8,388,370 points, meaning Dalek only spent 132,810 points in this game. This is very odd considering Dalek could only pull the Electra Trap 130 times. Now, this doesn't sound like a problem if you're unfamiliar with the game. Although, you can only have 24 zombies on the map at one time. Once again, this does not sound like a problem until you realize past round 6, more zombies will spawn the higher you go up in rounds. As an example, there are 516 zombies on round 74. Divide that by 24, and you get 21 and a half hordes. So, you'll have to activate the trap 22 times if you want to kill all the zombies to get to the next round. Furthermore, up to round 74, 13,577 zombies spawn. However, this is excluding boss rounds which can occur on a 4 to 5 round interval. If we are generous, we can give Dalek a boss round every 4 rounds, which is the best luck you could receive for the least amount of zombie kills. If we do round 74 divided by 4, we will get 18.5 rounds, which were non-normal rounds. So let's round 18.5 to 19, then subtract 74 minus 19, and that gives us 55 normal rounds. This is still problematic because 6,073 zombies spawn in 55 total rounds. Lastly, if we do 132 trap pulls times 24, which is the amount of zombies in one horde, we would only have 3,168 zombie kills. Yeah, this becomes problematic as Dalek technically could have killed the zombies with his ray gun. Though, it doesn't explain why he had over 8 million points on round 74. Remember when I said he only spent 132,810 points? Well, to earn points, Dalek had to buy MP5K ammo when he ran out, which cost 500 points per ammo buy. If we do 132,810 points divided by 500 points, we will get 265 ammo buys. Assuming Dalek got 120 bullets per ammo buy, we can do 265 times 120, which gives us 31,800 bullets. Lastly, if we are kind of Dalek and assume he hits 3 zombies, which is the maximum amount of zombies you can penetrate with one bullet, you will get 30 points. So, let's do 31,800 bullets times 30 points, and we only get 954,000 points earned. Yeah, that's only 954,000 points earned out of the 8.2 million he claimed to have. At this point, I can safely say with certainty, Dalek's round 74 game was, in fact, cheated. As surprising as it is to hear a multi-million subscribed YouTuber cheat a record, it wouldn't take long until a player was up for the challenge. On October 31st, 2011, a player named CJ would achieve round 92, completely crushing Excalibur's record. Unfortunately, there is not much to talk about this game as footage of the game is pretty scarce, though it's believed CJ ran 5 1.0, the first electric trap strategy on the map. First, the player would stand in the first room, right beside the MPL trap. Then, the player would walk over to the Quick Revive trap and shoot their MPL for points. Lastly, the player would walk out of the Quick Revive area, go over to the MPL trap, 
and activate it to kill the zombies. While simple, it was revolutionary for 5 high rounds. Fortunately for CJ, his record would stand for a good while. However, it would be overshadowed by one of the most impressive records for its time. In April 2012, a somewhat known player named Sith Bass would achieve round 100 on 5, making this the first round 100 and the first reset on 5, which was unfortunately modded, just like Dalek's game. However, unlike Dalek's game, Sith Bass claimed to hit a reset. Basically, a reset is where the game takes you back to the loading screen and to round 1 after a certain amount of time because the game cannot handle more entities. I'll give a better explanation later in the video, but for right now, that's all you need to know. Anyway, what makes Sith Bass reset so unique from other resets is he never got a loading screen, which is odd because every reset from before and after his game did. So what kind of quote unquote reset did Sith Bass get? Well, he faked the reset by making it seem like his game glitched by green pixels on the screen. Then, after the screen glitched, it turned black and he was back on round 1 after roughly 20 seconds. Unfortunately, there is no current footage I can use of this game as it's been pretty much erased from the internet. However, based on my personal observations as well as other players in the community, we can all collectively agree this game was cheated. On May 12, 2012, a somewhat small but talented player named Superhands would achieve round 115, fortunately making this the first round 100 on 5. What makes this record more unique from the fact is it was the first round 100 and it was the strategy Superhands used. Unlike the 5 1.0 strategy CJ used, Superhands ran a really scuffed version of 5 1.0. First, Superhands would stand in the Pentagon room near where the big elevator is located. Then, he would do one big loop around the Pentagon room to get a horde of zombies and allowed him to gain points using MP5K. Once he did the big loop, he would go up to the stairs to buy MP5K ammo, then run to the small elevator which leads to the first floor. Lastly, he ran to the MPL trap, waited roughly one second, and went into the first room and activated the Cook Revive trap and immediately ran back to the elevator to repeat the strat. However, there is one thing I did not note. There's a recharge time on the traps. Once a trap is activated, it'll stay on for 40 seconds. Once the 40 seconds are done, it'll take 50 seconds until the trap recharges. So, to get around that, Superhands would repeat the strategy like usual. Though, this time he would run through the Quick Revive trap area and head over to the MPL trap to activate it. Okay. After explaining this strategy, I think it's safe to say is more than scuffed. Like, why the fuck would you use an elevator to go downstairs to gain points with the MP5K instead of just staying upstairs and using the MPL? Well, that's a good question to ask because this record is probably cheated. How you ask? That's another good question because only one person from this area, Fishyzor, considers this game cheated. So, why am I considering this record unlegit based on what one person says? Well, if you remember the strategy I just told you, you might have noticed something odd about it. It was the amount of points Superhands was making. Instead of gaining points, Superhands was staying even. Now that isn't a bad thing. Staying even with your points is very important when running a trap strategy. Although, what makes this odd is how many overall points Superhands gained in this game. When Superhands died on round 115, he gained over 3 million overall points. If we compare the amount of points he earned to modern day players, who are very good at gaining points, you can see the massive difference in points earned. Hell, if we compare a round 167 game played 8 months ago compared to Superhands game, you can see there's only a 200,000 point difference, which is huge considering the round difference between both records is over 52 rounds. Because of this, I think we can collectively agree Superhands round 115 game is most likely cheated. Fortunately for the zombies community, a new era of 5 records would come, halting any cheating for almost a decade. This period would be titled the Optimization Era. Between the span of 2 years, 8 world records would be set on the map. The first one being set on April 7th, 2013, 
achieving round 160 by IL Steve IL. Absolutely blowing CJ's previous world record out of the water. Furthermore, this record would run 5-2.0, a strategy created by Fishizor back in 2012. Just like CJ's strat, Fishizor used the MPL trap to his advantage. However, this time you would use a Cook Revive trap as well. This would make 5 much more faster and, in some cases, safer than 5 1.0. On top of that, Steve became the first person to set windows on 5. If you don't know, 5 has 6 windows in the first room, but only 4 windows can be accessed. This means there will always be 2 windows that will never be broken. However, a player can change which windows are broken by using the elevator in the pentagon room, which leads all the way down to the laboratory. Obviously, this was necessary if Steve wanted to use 5 2.0, which required two windows near the Quick Revive trap to be closed. Fortunately, he was able to do it and got the world record, eventually sparking immense popularity in the community to play the map and attempt the world record. As a matter of fact, it would take less than a week for Steve's record to be broken. On April 12, 2013, King Jack Offsuit, arguably one of the best zombie players for his time, would reach round 175, making this the first time anyone had reached insta-kill rounds on the map. If you don't know, insta-kill rounds is a bug within the game's code that allows you to kill the zombies almost instantly. This happens because the zombie's health increases over time until it reaches round 163. The reason this happens is because the game is coded in 32-bit, which has a maximum value of 2,147,483,647. So, any number attempting to go above that number, in this case the zombie's health, it automatically resets it back to round 1. Obviously, insta-kill rounds make the game faster, and usually safer, so you can see why this is a big deal. Furthermore, this record was pretty impressive, and it wasn't just because King Jack reached the first insta-kill rounds on the map, it was because King Jack was attempting to reach the first round 200 on Black Ops. Unfortunately, Jack would never become the first to reach round 200, it's just 5 days prior to the round 175-5 game, Magic Gold Box would achieve round 209 on Kino de Tone. Despite this, it's pretty impressive knowing King Jack was attempting the first 200 on 5, which is widely considered one of the hardest maps for Black Ops 1. Fortunately for Jack, he would eventually reach a round of 209 on Duris, just 3 months after his 5 game, although it wouldn't take long until Steve's brother, Scotty i3, would attempt the first round 200 on the map. Starting around fall of 2013, Scotty would eventually reach round 93 on October 9th. While far from the record, Scotty would make some improvements over the next couple of weeks, eventually reaching round 176, beating the previous record by just one round. As awesome as it was for Scotty to get a new record, he still had his eyes on round 200. Matter of fact, it wouldn't take long until his dream came true. On November 27th, 2013, exactly one month after this round 175 game, Scotty would reach round 202, making this the first round 200 and the first reset on 5. This was significant as hitting the reset made zombies an official speedrun. Okay, I know that sounds odd because if you have some knowledge on zombies, you know the game never ends, right? Well, technically. See, unlike other games that are speedruns, Zombies does not have an official ending. So how does that make Zombies a speedrun then? Well, there's a reason why I said Zombies does not have an official ending, though it still has one. If you remember from earlier, I was explaining insta-kill rounds and how the maximum value the game can hold is a 32-bit number. Unsurprisingly, the game limits how much you can play due to this number. The reason this happens is because of entities. Think of entities as objects or sounds. These are littered all over the maps and, depending on the map, the amount of entities can vary. As an example, 5 has 591 base entities on the map. Now, on paper this does not sound like a problem although the entities will add up every 50 milliseconds. So, in 50 milliseconds, 591 entities will be added, making it 1182. 
Then another 50 milliseconds will go by, adding another 591 entities, making a total of 1,773 entities, and so on. Because of this, the entities will eventually add up over time, reaching a 32-bit number. However, just like insta-kill rounds, the game cannot go above the number, so reset the game all the way back to round 1. This is what makes Zombies a speedrun, is all players will reset at a very similar time, usually varying 10 minutes at most because certain things such as electric traps, for example, add temporary entities when they are activated. So, to say this record was impressive was an understatement. Scotty's game quite literally changed 5 forever. Unsurprisingly, Scotty's game would not be challenged for a little bit, until Insane Operative came along. During late fall of 2013 to the spring of 2014, a player named Insane Operative was attempting to reach the second round 200 and the second reset on 5. Unfortunately, many of Operative's personal bests are undocumented, although it is known he got his first round 100 on 5 in mid to late 2013, as well as achieving round 102, which was a two-player game played in December of 2013, which was the world record for the time. So, it's safe to say Operative was the next contender for the world record. And he was. On April 11, 2014, Insane Operative would achieve round 206 on 5, beating the previous record by 4 rounds and achieving the second ever reset on the map. Obviously, this was a pretty good record especially for how optimized it was. Hell, Scotty, the previous world record holder commented on Operative's video, saying the record wouldn't be beaten for a long time as they reset 66 hours in, a near identical reset time between both records. Surprisingly to Scotty, it would only take a couple of months until a legendary player would take the record. If you've been in the Zombies community for a while now, or watch my keynote or toe in world record history video, you most likely have heard of Extreme Toker. If not, then I have a treat for you. Extreme Toker is arguably one of the best if not the best Zombies player in history. How you ask? Well, Toker has around 160 on Dead Ops Arcade, which is the current world record, around 212 on Kino de Tone, which is the previous world record, Call the Dead around 122 two-player, which is the previous world record, and a two-player round 46 Jugside first room on Varect, which was also the previous world record. Yes, you heard that right, round 46 without opening any doors. Keep in mind, this barely scratches the surface for how many records Toker has held. So, in short, this guy is a definition of a legend. In fact, Toker would make history in July 2014 by achieving round 212 on 5. Holy shit. Not only did Toker nearly max out the map at the time, he also made it to round 212 after running out of cook revives on round 177, which is insanely impressive considering you only have 3 cook revives on solo. Furthermore, Toker beat the previous record by 6 rounds despite having an almost identical reset to Operative's round 206 record. Consequently, this would put a halt of any future attempts on 5 for almost a year. In late 2014 to early 2015, a fairly known player in the high round community, awkwardly sneaky, would attempt to break the 5 world record, reaching round 207 on November 19th, 2014. Despite getting to second place, this was far from beating the record. Matter of fact, round 212 was considered almost unbeatable, even for awkwardly sneaky who was extremely good at 5. Because of this, it would take a while until Sneaky had any chance to break the record. It wasn't until late December of 2014 to spring of 2015, Sneaky would start grinding 5 again after a round 210 game on the map Ascension, which was just 3 rounds away from tying the world record. So it's safe to say Sneaky wanted at the very least to tie Toker's record on 5. However, just one month after Sneaky's Ascension game, he would run into some problems. On round 96, Sneaky would walk in the Cook Revive room so he can kill zombies using the Electric Trap. Unfortunately, there was one zombie coming from the opposite side of the trap, 
forcing him into a cutback so he didn't die. Although, during this cutback, Sneaky would unintentionally mess it up by walking into the zombies at the last second. This forced him to use a crossbow, which, when upgraded, acts as a distraction device for the zombies. Obviously, this is an extremely useful device, but it can also be deadly if used improperly. In Sneaky's case, it was. Instead of jumping and shooting the crossbow towards a wall, he shot the crossbow on the zombie, keeping the other zombies around him. This was pretty bad as the crossbow bolt explodes after a few seconds. So, in the worst case, the bolt would explode, causing Sneaky to take damage and have the horde of zombies corner him and down him. Meaning the only way you could get out of the corner is to get lucky by jumping, shooting the crossbow, and praying the zombies do not glitch and get stuck on him. Thankfully, they did not, but this posed a question for Sneaky. Could he get the record if he constantly made near devastating mistakes? Maybe. In March of 2015, Sneaky would start up another game. Though, just like his other games, he didn't have a smooth start. Only just one hour into his game, Sneaky would nearly go down in round 42. And 46. Hell, this wasn't the end. A few hours later on round 78, Sneaky would nearly go down because he got trapped by just three zombies. Yeah, things weren't looking good for him. In fact, it would progressively go down from here. Once again on round 117, he would get trapped, forcing him to shoot his crossbow. Then on round 125, he would get trapped again, somehow not downing. Same could be said for round 131. Despite all of this, Sneaky would somehow make it to insta-kill rounds, which essentially means the game is easier and faster, allowing Sneaky to take a breather from potential downs. Roughly three days after reaching instas, Sneaky would not achieve round 170. Not round 180 or 190 or even 200. Hell, he didn't even tie Toker's record. Sneaky did the impossible. He achieved 213. This record was more than impressive. It defined the map. Not only did Sneaky do extremely well in his later rounds, he reached round 213, just 4 minutes before the reset, which was 65 hours and 30 minutes. An hour earlier than the previous records. This means a player could technically reach round 214, or even higher depending on how lucky they got with boss rounds. However, it's easier said than done, because within a year, Two players named Umesco and HEM Rick would reach round 213, making this the first three-way tie in Zombies history. Unfortunately, there isn't much to be said about these records besides Rick reaching round 213 in 64 hours and Umesco accidentally trading out his crossbow on round 180, causing him to lose time as well as a record, resetting just two minutes off of reaching round 214. After Sneaky's, Umesco's, and Rick's games, any record attempts for 5 would come to a halt, ending a legendary era for this map. Although, this would open a new door for record attempts. A player named Playfan would start record attempts on the map's moon and Shangri-La back in 2016, reaching round 132 on moon and round 190 on Shangri-La, which was achieved without downing once and was 3 rounds away from the record. However, this would eventually bore Playfan, making him put his eyes on 5. Within a few months of grinding, Playfan would achieve round 150 on February 22nd and round 149 on May 13th, 2017, nearly tying his personal best. Although, it would take a few months until Playfan beat his personal best. In September of that year, Playfan would finally beat his personal best of round 150, achieving round 216, finally putting an end to the three-way tie record on 5. Moreover, this was Playfan's first ever round 200 and his first solo record, and just like Sneaky's record, Playfan reset 65 hours in, proving a round 220 could be possible as Playfan got very unlucky with boss rounds. Also, this was around the time where 5 would get more optimized thanks to an insta-kill strategy which used the upgraded M16 in the lab area of the map, allowing the strategy to kill a horde of zombies roughly 1.2 seconds faster compared to the commonly used upgraded M14 strategy. 
Lastly, in early 2018, a few players, most notably Oxygen for the win, would create a spreadsheet based entirely on resets for each individual map. Not only would the spreadsheet show the theoretical maximum reset possible on each map, but it would also tell you what you could do to remove every possible permanent entity off the map. One of the most common ways of doing so was turning on reduced graphic content, which removes Gibbs when killing a zombie. This was the most common way to extend the reset, as it extended it on every map, sometimes varying from 1 to 2 hours on a few maps, and up to 5 or more extra hours on other maps. Also, this wasn't the only thing players could do to extend the reset. Certain doors, such as debris, could remove permanent entities, turning on electro traps would add temporary entities, and in 5's case, if you broke every window in 5, you could remove 180 entities off the map, essentially allowing the reset to be in between 70 to 71 hours instead of 65 to 66 hours. Obviously, this was massive for the community as records could now be optimized more than ever, and it wouldn't take long until a few players attempted to push 5 to its limits. One of these players was Tidy Barbecue. Tidy Barbecue was an interesting player in the community. He rarely uses mic, barely talked to anyone besides a select few in the community, and only streamed when he felt like it. Despite this, he is widely regarded as one of the best players during this time. How come you ask? Well, he currently holds the Origins High Round World record of 150 on Black Ops 2, which is still being held nearly 4 years later. He would also hold the Transit Soul High Round record of 156 for a year, and would reach round 131 on Die Rise, which is the world record at the time, eventually tying the record again just a few months later. Now, if you know anything about zombies, you'll most likely recognize that all of these maps are from Black Ops 2, not Black Ops 1. Because of this, Tidy wanted to attempt to break a record on Black Ops 1, eventually deciding to do 5 as it was one of the more harder maps, and surprisingly, 5 wasn't that optimized compared to other maps, making this a perfect opportunity for anyone to get the record, especially for Tidy Barbecue. Unfortunately, unlike the other records which have a history behind them, there was a history behind Tidy's attempts. The reason I say there was is due to Tidy removing all gameplay in 2021. In fact, on July 25th, 2018, Tidy would break the world record by reaching around 218. However, just like all of his previous attempts and past records, there is no more footage of this game. Fortunately, we do know what Tidy did in his first round 100s of the game, thanks to Mr. Mooney, who was able to get in contact with Tidy. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to Mr. Mooney and Becca for helping me out with these world record histories. They've spent countless of hours researching records that barely anyone knows about, and because of that, I'm going to link their Twitch as well as their Twitter. So, if you could check them out, that would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, let's get back on track. The strategy Tidy used was like every other 5 record, 5 2.0. Also, based on what players have said, we do know Tidy made sure he optimized his reset as much as possible by disabling graphic content, smashing all the windows, and he would run the lab strategy for insta-kill rounds, allowing him to beat the previous record by just 2 rounds. Furthermore, it was around this time 5 2.5 came out. The strategy was very similar to 2.0. Although, the player would stand next to the window located near Cook Revive after they went through the Cook Revive trap two times. Once the player stood for a few seconds to let the zombies spawn in, they'd go the other way around to kill the zombies from both Cook Revive windows. While simple, this would make the old strat 1 SBH, or second per zombie horde, slower. Besides that, there isn't much to talk about Tidy's record except it being the true, first optimized record on 5. Just a few months after Tidy's game, a revolutionary strategy would come to 5, this time being called 3.0. As you can imagine, 3.0 was very similar to 2.5 as it made the player do the same thing with the Quick Revive trap, this time also applying it to the MPL trap. With both of these traps combined, the strategy was roughly 1 to 2 seconds per horde faster than 2.5, although there was one drawback. It was much harder. 
Because a player had to stand on the opposite side of the MPL trap after going through it two times, it meant they had to train in a very small space, essentially meaning one fuck up could cause you a down or your entire game depending on the situation. So, theoretically speaking, a player could run the strategy all the way up to reset. However, the chances of that happening are unrealistic. Despite this, that wouldn't discourage players to try it. In late 2018 to early 2019, two players named TTS for life and Yezzy would try to push a map to its limits. Notably Yezzy being the better one as he reached his first insta-kill round on 5 in September of 2018. Unfortunately, the same could not be said for TTS. Matter of fact, out of all the record contenders during 5's history, TTS was arguably one of the least capable players to compete for the record. It didn't help Yezzy would get the record just a few months later by reaching round 219 on March 18th, 2019 beating the previous record by just one round. Although, there is one advantage TTS had over Yezzy. It was a strategies. In Yezzy's 219 game, he never used a 2.5 or 3.0 strategy because at the time, people thought it was not viable enough for the record. On the other hand, TTS thought otherwise. If TTS could run 2.5 for the first 20 hours of the game, he could save enough time to beat Yezzy by approximately 2, to three rounds. Obviously, this is easier said than done, meaning it would take a few months until TTS got anywhere near Yezzy's skill. It wasn't until spring of 2019, TTS would finally catch up to Yezzy by reaching round 221, beating his previous personal best by 30 rounds and becoming the first person to use 2.5 in a world record game. Using it all the way up to until round 130, then switching back to 5 2.0. With these two strategies combined, it allowed him to play safe and fast enough to beat Yezzy by two rounds. Lastly, because TTS ran 2.5 all the way up to round 130, it would take nearly a year until his record would have competition again. After TTS's game, Yezzy wanted to get his record back, but not in the way you might expect. He wanted to push the map to its absolute limits as well. Throughout the entirety of 2019, Yezzy would grind 5, becoming one of the first people to use 5 3.0 and the stakeout insta-kill strategy. This strat was discovered by Globox back in 2019, improving the previous insta-kill strategy by not 1 SPH, or 2 SPH, or even 3. This strategy was 4 seconds per horde faster, making it one of the fastest in the game. 11 seconds per horde to be exact. This meant a player could theoretically get round 235 plus or even more on the map depending if they ran 3.0 for a majority of the game. Moreover, if a player ran 2.5 for the entire game, they could still get in the high 220s which is insane. Unfortunately, just like TTS's round 221 record, running these strategies is easier said than done. In fact, Magic Globox who created the stakeout instas was also going for the record. However, just like Yezzy, they would both struggle to get anywhere near the record because of how difficult the strategies were. It wasn't until fall of 2019 Yezzy would finally master the strategies, this time getting more consistent games, eventually breaking TTS's record in March of 2020 by reaching around 229, playing over 7 hours faster than the previous record. Moreover, Yezzy would reset just 15 minutes away from 229, proving round 230 plus could be possible. Despite this, it was argued round 229 was the closest 5 will become maxed out for a while. At least that's what some players thought. Not long after the game, a massive controversy would start over first box patches. To put it in short, first box patches eliminate all RNG so you can get the weapons you need out of the first box within your first 2 to 3 hits. This allows a player to get a setup going within their first restart instead of needing to restart sometimes 5 to 10 or even more times to get the weapons they need thanks to RNG. The reason this was controversial is because a mystery box which contains the weapons a player needs to get a setup going is entirely RNG based. On top of that, zombie patches can do much more than manipulating RNG. 
If a player wanted to, they could change pretty much anything in the game by using the patch. As an example, they could keep the mystery box in one spot the entire game so they don't get fire sales, which occur once the box moves. Now, this one is an extreme example and would be fairly easy to catch, but you can see why this sparked some panic within the community. It didn't help that some players actually found out Yezzy's game was patched. The way they could tell this was by looking at the perk bottle's animation. A non-patch game has a smooth looking animation, while a patch game has a more stiff animation, which looks identical to World at War's perk animations. So I know what you're probably thinking. Did the community catch another cheated game? Not exactly. See, while the patch can manipulate many things, Yezzy's game never showed any manipulation. In fact, Yezzy said he used a patch in a two-player game to fix backwards movement speed, which is a common issue on almost every Zombies game. On console, the player walks backwards as fast as they move forwards, same with moving left and right. However, on PC, if a player moves backwards or left to right, their speed is actually slower than moving forward. The only way to fix this on solo games is to load up Dead Ops Arcade, quit out, then play a map. Unfortunately, you cannot do this on co-op, so some players resorted to using a backwards movement patch, obviously only changing their backwards movement speed and nothing else. Despite this, players still debate if Yezzy's game was legit or not. Whether it was true he forgot to take the supposed backwards movement speed patch out or not, we'll never know for sure, and because of that, it remains a mystery. After Yezzy's game was found out to be patched, it wouldn't take long until there was a swarm of players attempting to beat it. Most notably Magic Glowbox, Cryptic Novas, and Umesco who is a previous world record holder on the map. Magic Glowbox who was already going for the record would become the first player to reach round 105 in under 7 hours. Although he would eventually stop in late 2020 to very early 2021 due to personal life. Cryptic Novas would eventually get a sub 7 hour round 100 as well, back in October of 2020, and would continue to work on getting faster times, eventually getting a 2 hour and 39 minute to round 70. Also, during this time, Umesco would start grinding 5 in early 2021, mostly focusing on the round 50 speedrun world record with no Mule Kick. Mule Kick is a perk that allows a player to hold 3 weapons instead of 2. Though, Umesco wanted to remove it off the map so the reset would be extended. The way players can do this on PC is by playing offline on Steam, then loading up a map of their choice. This removes Mule Kick off of every map besides Moon, and can extend the reset by a significant amount, depending on the map. Anyway, Umesco would surprisingly get the 50 SR in just 1 hour and 8 minutes. Pretty damn compressive considering this was without Mule Kick. Furthermore, Umesco barely played 5 high rounds since his round 213 record back in 2015. So, this was a warm up for him to get back into the map. It wasn't until summer of 2021, Umesco would start grinding high rounds on 5, mostly focusing on pushing the 5 3.0 strategy to its limits, eventually pushing it to round 110, then 120, and eventually round 135. On top of that, in the game where he ran 5 3.0 to round 135, he would reach insta-kill rounds in 28 and a half hours, over an hour faster than Yezzy's 229 game. Then, round 248 hours and 11 minutes, nearly 2 hours faster than Yezzy. To put it bluntly, Umesco was so good at saving time, he could theoretically max out the map and he pretty much did by reaching round 237. Yes, you heard that right, round 237, a 8 round difference from the previous record. This record practically changed everything. When Yezzy got round 229, players thought round 235 would be near the max, but Umesco changed that, making players believe a round 240 or possibly slightly higher could be achieved. Until it wasn't. Shortly after Umesco uploaded a montage of his world record, players noticed he didn't have all of his gameplay uploaded. The only rounds he did have uploaded were 112 through 128, 140 through 145, 149 through 152, 162 through 166, 
195 through 200, and 208 through 212. If you haven't noticed already, Umezko is missing his final rounds of his record, and the early rounds which are the most crucial rounds of the game. The reason these rounds are so crucial is because it tells if a player is using a patch as they need to buy perks during setup, or to know if they open up a mod menu early on in their game. However, players did find out Umesco used a timer patch. The way they found out was because of this small timer at the top right corner. In a non-patch game, that timer is not visible, although in Umesco's game, it was, confirming he used a patch. So, now that players knew Umesco was missing gameplay and patched his game, it's led many to believe he's cheated. Furthermore, some players have asked him to show gameplay. So far, he's not and usually says he's too lazy to upload the rest of the game, leading to more suspicion by many players. Now, while Umesco may be missing gameplay and his game was patched, there's no evidence to say his game was modded, although a large majority of the community has agreed. Unless Umesco uploads the rest of his gameplay, round 237 does not count as a record. Fortunately, that would change in the upcoming months. A somewhat new player named Jermaine Cubes would start grinding 5 in December of 2020, mostly going for round 100 speedruns, eventually achieving a 6 hour and 57 minute round 100 in late March. Pretty impressive considering Jermaine started playing 5 competitively just 3 months prior. However, this wasn't enough for Jermaine. Instead of mostly going for round 100 speedruns, he thought to himself, if I can make it to round 100 in under 7 hours, why can't I push the map to its limits? Well, to say he pushed the map to its limits is one of the biggest understatements in speedrunning history. When Jermaine got his first sub 7 hour round 105, his highest round on the map was 105. Within 3 weeks later, he would achieve round 167. A 62 round difference. Then round 187 in November of 2021. Although, Jermaine wasn't done just yet. Just one month later, Jermaine would achieve round 241. Yeah. monkeys. You have two monkeys, Jermaine. There it is. It's gonna be twenty-four forty-six. Yeah. Wait, there. what? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. 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 To round 241 on December 26th of 2020, the current world record, and he did it in the best way possible. Remember Yezzy's in New Mexico's game which ran 5 3.0 up to mid 120s to mid 130s? Yeah, Jermaine ran 5 3.0 up to round 198. Moreover, he would also take it down at round 121, 137, and round 164. Essentially, he played round 164 all the way up to round 241 without game overing, eventually hitting the reset 70 hours, 24 minutes, and 2 seconds into the game. Lastly, this game reached insta-kill rounds in 26 hours and 48 minutes, as well as round 242 hours and 38 minutes, making Jermaine's 241 game hold the fastest insta-kill rounds and round 200 ever reached on 5. So, this begs a question, what is theoretically possible on 5? Well, if a player ran 5 3.0 all the way up to reset to play faster, missed barely any insta-kill rounds thanks to good boss round luck, and removed meal kick off the map as well as quick revive to extend a reset, theoretically speaking, round 245 would be possible, which isn't far off from Jermaine's 241 game showing you just how impressive and near maxed out these zombie high rounds are. Because of this, I'll leave Jermaine's socials in the description, as well as every other player's socials. Take care, and thank you for watching.